friends, welcome back to the Disney Housewife channel. If you're new, my name's Heather. Today's video is a bookish video. I have a book haul for you that I'm very excited to share. The first book I'm going to share with you is a Disney book and it's the only Disney title in this haul. So do you remember last year when we did a book exchange with the Tale as Old as Time book club with Abby from the Disney Sisters? This is how long my mom has had this book. When I originally bought the book for my person, it was sent to my mom's house by mistake. I did not want to ask her to get out to send it to me. I just went ahead and reordered the book, sent it to my person, and then every time I go to my mom's house, I completely forget to pick it up. And I happened to see it out in the open the last time I was there and I grabbed it. So now I am the proud owner of my own copy of Reflection. This is the Mulan Twisted Tale. And I've said before, I'm not a huge fan of this series. I did not like the Frozen one as much. And I really did not like the um, Aladdin one. I can't think of the name of it. A whole new world maybe I did not I did not like that one at all I did love the Beauty and the Beast retelling now so many of my friends have read this book and they have told me how incredible it is so I'm really excited to read this and I think because I've only watched Mulan a few times you know that's not one of my favorite movies at all but because I've only watched it a few times I'm not gonna be playing the movie in my head when I'm trying to read this as I did with the others the hardest one for me to read was Frozen I loved the concept of that story but because Anna and Elsa have such a significant and strong bond as sisterhood, even though they're separated within the home, and they both still are so connected in the heart, but they're so isolated at the same time, I had a really hard time, really hard time with that book. But I'm really excited to read this, so I won't be having those flashbacks of the movie. Um, but if you have enjoyed The Twisted Tales and if you've loved this book, let me know your thoughts without spoiling it and uh, I'm happy to share my thoughts about that once I'm reading it on Instagram. The next two books I have to share with you are from the same author, and it is Ruth Ware. I read The Turn of the Key, and I really did enjoy it. Um, it, was, it was pretty slow throughout, but it kept my attention. So I do like her writing style, and I've heard some really good things about both of these books. So the very first one I will share with you, I literally got for 99 cents on eBay, and it's kind of, kind of a little worn but that's okay it just means it's well loved right i don't see any like ripped pages and i've had some really good luck ordering books on ebay well someone dog the page well that's not very lovable <laughs> but anyway let's just move past that um this is in a dark dark wood i really do like how the moon is shining out here really nice cover kind of simplistic i really enjoy it and Reese Witherspoon has uh, a notation here on the front. It says, prepare to be scared, really scared. Well, I don't want to be scared. The other thriller that I read from her was not scary. So I hope this is not like in the horror genre because I kind of, I, I kind of try to stay away from that. I'm okay with thrillers, but it's a little bit much for me. This is a NPR 2015 best book of the year and soon to be a major motion picture. I don't even, is, is the movie out? I probably should have done my research on this. So there's more from Reese Witherspoon inside. It says, aside from the being scared, when I read this page turning book about a bachelorette party gone wrong, I almost bit all my fingernails off. And then there's a quote from the Oprah magazine, Marie Claire, Bustle, Vulture, The Skim. But again, I'm not really seeing a synopsis. Ooh, this might be scary. Okay, now I'm worried. <laughs> so just inside, the only thing I can find to read here, it says, in a dark, dark wood, there was a dark, dark house. And in the dark, dark house was a dark, dark room. And in the dark room was a dark, dark cupboard. And in the dark cupboard, there was a skeleton. Traditional Halloween tale. That still says nothing about the book other than it's a bachelorette party gone wrong. So, <laughs> sorry, I can't share more about that. And I don't want to pull up Goodreads right now because I have so many to share. I don't want it to be like all about this book but it's dark and mysterious right from the get-go. So um, if her writing style is still the same, I think that I will enjoy it. I just don't wanna be scared. <laughs> okay, the very next book is a psychological thriller and it is The Woman in Cabin 10. This one was chosen by librarians as the number one library reads favorite of favorites for 2016. So apparently back to back, these, these both got great reviews and it says it is a beach read thriller that has sun and suspense and goes well with SPF. Um, 
will keep readers spellbound. And if you're a fan of Agatha Christie, get ready to curl up with a suspenseful mystery. This book may just do to cruise vacations what Jaws did to ocean swimming. Ooh. So this one I might hang on to for the summer because I know that Book Skywalker has mentioned um, this as well, but liking to read books set in the season. So if it's a seasonal read like this one's a summer read, then obviously that would be fun to read in the summer. So I like to read fall themed books in the fall, Christmas and winter in the Christmas season. So I, I'm liking where that's going and that will definitely be a summer read for me. The next book I have to share with you is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. And I just finished, oh gosh, it was last year in the fall. I finished Behind Closed Doors and I loved it. I loved it. And I honestly think I like Riley Sager's writing better than Ruth Ware. But I'm, I'm really, really excited about that one. If you're unfamiliar with Riley Sager, he is the author of Final Girls and what is it? Oh, wom The Woman in the Window. In the latest thriller from the best-selling author of Final Girls, a young woman returns to her childhood summer camp to uncover the truth about a tragedy that happened there 15 years ago. True to two truths and a lie. Two truths and a lie. The girls played it all the time in their cabin at Camp Nightingale. Vivian, Natalie, Allison, and first-time camper Emma, Emma Davis, the youngest of the group. But the games ended the night Emma sleepily watched the others sneak out in the cabin, out of the cabin into the darkness. The last she or anyone saw of them was Vivian closing the cabin door behind her, shushing Emma with a finger pressed to her lips. Now a rising star in the New York art scene, Emma turns her past into paintings, massive canvases filled with dark leaves and gnarled branches that cover ghostly shapes in white dresses. When the paintings catch the attention of Francesca Harris White, the wealthy owner, of Camp Nightingale, she implores Emma to return to the newly reopened camp as a painting instructor. Seeing an opportunity to find out what really happened to her friends all those years ago, Emma agrees. Familiar faces, unchanging cabins, and the same dark lake haunt Nightingale, even though the camp is opening its doors for the first time since the disappearances. Emma is even, e Emma is even signed to the last, oh my gosh, Emma's even signed to the same cabin she slept in as a young teenager, but soon discovers a security camera, the only one on property, pointed directly at its door. Then cryptic clues that Vivian left behind about the camp's twisted origins began surfacing. As she digs deeper, Emma finds herself sorting through the lies from the past while facing mysterious threats in the present. And the closer she gets to the truth about Camp Nightingale and what really happened to her friends, the more she realizes the closure that closure could come at a deadly price. So this sounds really cool. I think this is gonna be a win for me. As you guys know, I like some psychological thrillers and thrillers in general. So I think this is gonna be a really nice one. This cover is kind of eerie, um, but it's, I think it's nicely done. So the next three books I have to share with you are from the Dollar Tree. I always have to check out that section when I go in and I did not find these all in one trip, but I think there was over, over three trips. So each time I went, I found a book. This one is called I'll Stay and it has a very, kind of looks eerie. I don't know, it may not look eerie to you, but I feel like the book cover is kind of eerie. And it's at nighttime with a house and some trees at the bottom. It is called I'll Stay by Karen Day. There's, more. There's a price to pay for saving yourself. There are some decisions you can never unmake. You can only atone for them or try to. During her senior year of, year of college, Claire Michaels takes a spring break trip to Florida with three other girls, including her best friend, Lee. She's hoping for adventure and a few stories to share back at school. Instead, a string of bad choices leads to a horrific encounter and Lee offers herself up so that Claire can escape. In the weeks and months that follow that fateful incident, Lee, once so dynamic, dynamic and ambitious, flounders and withdraws. Claire was the only person whom she'd ever confided about her troubled past. For Claire, that role felt like an honor until it became a burden. Now she's trying to make amends for her momentary selfishness by taking care of Lee. Just as she's been taking care of her high-strung mother, whose best-selling novel has been both windfall and curse. Years pass, circumstances change, and the contact between Claire and Lee ebbs and flows, but the events of that Florida night are impossible to escape. They are dragging Claire back, forcing her to confront what really happened and her part in it in hopes. Her 
part in it. Yeah, in hopes of untangling guilt from loyalty and earning forgiveness at last. So this book actually came out in 2018. Never heard of it, but I'm willing to give that a go. I feel like I've seen this book. The next one I'm gonna share with you is Last Seen Alive by Claire Douglas. She can run, but her past won't hide. Author of Local Girl Missing. And I wanna say that I've seen both of these somewhere, but I might be totally lying. Here is the cover. I love, love all of these covers. Just the color, the whole aesthetic of these co covers and the colors of them are making me really happy. Libby Hall needs to hide to escape from a personal and public tragedy, which is why the house swap with the Haywoods is a godsend. Libby can't believe her and her husband, Jamie's good fortune in exchanging the tiny city flat for a beautiful haven on the English coast. But before she can begin to relax the work and work to heal her fragile marriage, Libby makes some disturbing discoveries about the house. The peace and isolation of the getaway begin to feel threatening. How alone are they? Why does she feel like someone is watching them? Ooh. When it appears that Jamie is hiding something from her, Libby's paranoia gets the best of her. It should, for she has buried secrets of her own. As the past comes crawling out of the darkness, Libby fears she's walked into an elaborate trap, but who has said it? What do they want from her? And how far is she willing to go to keep her past deeds hidden? A deeply atmospheric and utterly addictive thriller that examines how far one woman will go to outrun her former life. Last Seen Alive will keep its readers guessing right up to its shocking conclusion. This sounds so good. I'm like, please don't sleep on the Dollar Tree section of books because, I mean, those both sound great, right? And we have one more. Um, so this is actually the next to the last book. I only have one to share after this one. And this one is called You Are Always Mine by Nicole Bart. I shared this one in my Dollar Tree haul. The other ones I did not, so... I just wanted to do these all together so you guys could hear about them. Newly separated and living with her two sons in a small town, Jessica Chamberlain receives a phone call one quiet morning that shatters her world. As she tries to pick up the pieces and make sense of what happened, Jess realizes that a tragic death is just the beginning. Soon, she is caught in a web of lies, horrified to learn that it all leads back to her adopted seven-year-old son, Gabriel. A harrowing story of tenacious love and heartbreaking betrayal. You are always mine is about the wars we wage and the about the wars we wage to keep the ones we love close. Again, don't sleep on the Dollar Tree. I thought this sounded so good. And I was sitting here reading this at the Dollar Tree trying to hurry and not be like out in public. And I'm reading this and I'm like, shut up. I'm getting this. <laughs> so it sounded absolutely amazing. So we are down to the very last book. I know I feel like that went by so fast and yet it didn't. <laughs> um, but this book recommendation was from a fellow rescuer in the Bulldog Rescue that I am a part of. And this book is Little Disasters by Sarah Vaughn. And again, all these like blue and like ombre covers. I just, I'm here for it right now. I don't know why I'm drawn to those, but I really am. And I didn't know that the cover would kind of like, all of these covers would kind of match at some point, but they did. And um, well, I, I really like it a lot. So this one, I don't know what year this one came out. I feel like this one was fairly new as well. And I did get this one on eBay. Um, oh, this is 2020. So I think I did, I normally am getting books between um, $3 and between nine, 99 cents and $3, I've been finding so many books. And I think I paid $5.99 for this one, but I really did want it. And obviously it was better than paying full price. And I will not buy any books on eBay unless it has free shipping. So I didn't pay shipping on any of these. You think you know her, but look a little closer. She's a stay-at-home mom of three with boundless reserves of patience, energy, and love. After being friends for a decade, this is how Liz sees Jess. Then one moment changes everything. Dark thoughts and carefully guarded secrets surface, and Liz is left questioning everything she thought she knew about her friend and about herself. The truth can't come soon enough. With Sarah Vaughn's signature clever and compelling prose, Little Disasters is a tightly wound and evocative page turner that will haunt you long after you finish the last page. So that was really short and sweet. We didn't get to hear a whole lot. We didn't get a whole lot of there wasn't a whole lot of secrets given away in that synopsis, but I think it's um, I think it's gonna be good. I heard wonderful things from my friend Christina, who suggested this and shared her book on 
on Facebook as she finished it. That is gonna do it for this book haul. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me for a few minutes. I definitely appreciate you spending time with me. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were. I hope that you will continue enjoying hanging out with me when we talk about book things and of course Disney things as well. I hope you guys have a blessed day and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!